Welcome back to our podcast. Today, we are going to answer a question that many of you probably are thinking or have asked. Does cardio burn muscle? Yes. Hot topic. We're going to dive into a lot of myths that you might have heard. Um, we're going to clear up the air and answer this question and really dive in deep on conditioning and strength training and the whole question behind does cardio burn muscle? Um, can you do cardio and still build muscle? We're going to dive into all that today. So before we hop into that, we're doing a free giveaway this month for a free custom program. So if you'd like to sign up for a chance to win a free program that's customized and tailored to you, I left the sign up link down in the comments in the description below, or you can head over to fitgrindformula.com. It'll ask you some questions. You can fill out that form and you can enter for your chance to win a full four week free custom program. So don't miss out on the chance after you listen to the podcast, head over to the link in the comments in the description below. If you're listening on YouTube or if you're listening on a different platform, head over to fitgrindformula.com to sign up. Yeah. So cardio is one of those things that people think of first when they're going through a fat loss process. So when you think of fat loss, you're instantly like, oh, I got to do more cardio. So let's kind of touch on that and why people think that way or why maybe that's not true. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's, I think you're exactly right. I think when people think of weight loss, they're instantly like, diet starts tomorrow and then so does hopping on the treadmill or the yeah. Stairmaster or whatever cardio machine they like. And that's one equation to fat loss yeah. or losing weight, but you could lose weight without cardio, you know? Yeah. So I think that there's so many other factors that I would start with when, when you're trying to lose weight and there's so many different pieces to a puzzle that yes. you're trying to get that puzzle to really fit. Um, and that end goal, if you're looking for fat loss or maintaining muscle, you know, cardio is a piece of it, but it's not the end all be all. Correct. Obviously mm -hmm. we could do a whole podcast on like the most optimal way to structure cardio and your program to lose fat. Mm -hmm. But Yes, it's, it's a tool in your toolbox. It's not the end all be all strength training is a tool in your toolbox. Your nutrition is a tool in your toolbox. Right. It's not the entire program or the sole emphasis. Right. And the reason that I wanted to bring that up first is because, you know, a lot of people think that that's the answer. And then when they do that and they do balls to the wall, all cardio, yes, you will lose muscle. Yeah. But if you're bringing in the cardio and continuing to fuel your body properly, then no, we will not lose muscle. Yeah. So let's kind of dive into that and what that looks like if we're trying to incorporate cardio while not losing muscle. Because like I said, you will lose muscle if you do too much cardio and you're not fueling your body properly. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great place to start is talk about the principles of if you're trying to lose body fat, trying to recomp if you have a really big weight loss goal or you're just looking to lose a little bit of stomach fat, you know, maybe five to 10 pounds, but you're looking to maximize holding on as much muscle as possible. Right. There are principles that we'll talk about when you talk about the next that you should follow because yes, you can do cardio and you can still maintain muscle mass. You just have to structure things just like anything. You can't just like yep. willy nilly, like just go into the gym, make sure that there's structure. And that's really what we try to provide with the people that we train in person, online, um, all the social media content, YouTube content, podcast content that we do is just to educate and like inform and, and create structure. We don't just want to go into the gym and kind of wing it. We want to have a program. We want to have a plan because if you stick to that plan, it's so much easier to make progress and track your progress. Um, one of the biggest things that you can do to make sure that you're not losing muscle when you're, you start increasing cardio or adding cardio into your program is the strength training aspect. So say that you want to start losing weight and you've been strength training and then all of a sudden you're like, I want to lose some body fat and you cut out your strength training or you stop lifting heavy. You stop trying to get stronger from week to week and you add in all this cardio. That is where you're going to run the risk of losing muscle mass. Yeah. You might lose five pounds, 10 pounds, but how much of that was body fat versus how much it was lean muscle mass. And at the end of the day, if your goal is to lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds or 30 pounds or whatever the weight loss goal is, you want to lose as much of that as possible from body fat and water and as little as possible from muscle mass. And that's the number one step or the first step I should say 
is to still keep your strength training heavy, still try to overload. Don't lighten weights up. I know that's a big misconception or like yeah. a Higher big reps, myth. Lighter Higher weight. reps burns more calories and burns more weight or fat and definitely doesn't. You're just going to, you need to do everything that you did to build muscle, but just, you just need to create a caloric deficit and maybe use cardio to create that caloric deficit. Yeah, I agree. There's also this higher risk factor that plays when you're adding in more cardio and you're going into a deficit of losing muscle. Like that is a risk factor that you are going to like endure because when you're decreasing calories, when you're implementing more cardio, our bodies are going to take away what's the easiest, what's the hardest thing to keep, which is muscle. So by, like you said, trying to keep muscle, hold on to muscle, you want to continue your strength training, continue your max effort in the um, gym, but also recovering and fueling your body with enough protein. So making sure that you're getting adequate amount of protein throughout the day and fueling properly between those workouts with carbohydrates. Yeah. I think that's the next piece to it. The nutrition yeah. <laughs> piece, you know, this, this is where we can kind of dive in next is what does your nutrition look like? Are you currently tracking your food? Um, are you, do you have your macro set up? You know, are you just tracking calories? Are you tracking macros? Or are you just winging it? If you go into a caloric deficit and then you add all this cardio on top of it, and you're still trying to strength train and you're not eating enough protein, you're going to lose muscle mass. Yes. You need to eat at least 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And if you're Minimal. in a caloric deficit, I would say you probably need to be closer to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Yeah. Um, that's a non-negotiable. That's one thing that if you're lower than that and you're training hard and you're trying to lose weight, yeah, you you can still lose body fat, but you're going to lose muscle in the process. I've seen it happen before. Um, I've advised clients not to go that low in protein Yeah. and they could take that, they can leave that. But I've seen firsthand and secondhand what happens when we decrease our protein and even just overall total calories too. Like people get so extreme and we've talked about this on the podcast yeah. before they go into this crazy cut and it's like they cut a thousand calories out of their diet just randomly. And then all of a sudden your body's like, what the heck's going on? It's going to, it's going to be really hard to sustainably lose body fat. Um, and you will lose muscle mass in that process. So, and you can't decrease from there too. Like yes. if you decrease too quickly, you have no room to decrease anymore. And then you do have to start pulling in more cardio. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cardio is just a tool. You know, yeah. I think that where you should start with cardio, say you're doing zero cardio whatsoever, maybe just start with like one to two days a week. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, yes, it's a great way to lose body fat, but it's also just healthy for our heart. And I think even if you're in a bulk, like right now I'm currently training to put on some size, build some muscle, build some strength. I'm still doing at least two days of cardio a week. Not only because, um, is that going to help with improving my cardiovascular system? It's going to help improve my health overall. I just feel better when I do cardio. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm able to push a little harder in strength training sessions, recover a little better, handle a little more volume, chase some kids around, chase some kids around, throw very functional. Baseballs. Yeah. Throw some <laughs> baseballs and catch down some pot flies. Like, yeah, it's very <laughs> functional to do your cardio. So, you know, we've talked about this in the podcast before, like don't solely just focus on creating your program around how you look. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so easy to get caught up in that. Guilty. Yes. I'm guilty of this too. You know, it, it's so easy to get caught up in like, Oh, I'm going to do these exercises cut out because I want to look this way. I'm going to eat this food because I want to look this way. I'm going to do this cardio because I want to look this way. Like, well, that's all over social media. Yes. It's like, you want abs? Do this move. Yep. You want a big butt? Do this move. No, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we're surrounded by yeah. that. And like, that can be a motivation. I'm not yeah. saying that that's bad. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have, there's some vanity in fitness. That's yeah. okay. But it can't be the only motivation. Yeah. That There has to be deeper reasons. You're there right. has to be more reasons. And that's why I, I really try to structure my clients' programs. And I know you do the same thing is yeah. like around some performance stuff too. And, and their goals, their goals, like create those goals of performance, um, feeling better, having better functionality. Like you said, yeah. like, you know, if, if you have someone that's 50, 60, 70 year olds coming, coming in and they're like, I want to lose 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's like, great. That's awesome. What else do we want to elaborate? Do? Yeah. Elaborate. <laughs> Let's, I can't get up off the ground. Okay. There's a goal. Let's, Mm -hmm. Let's build some strength so that you can get on the ground, play with your grandkids and stand up. No problem. 
Those you can get down and tie your shoe. Yep. Like I had a client, he's currently 77 right now. He first came in and he struggled with getting down on one knee to tie a shoe and getting back up. Well, if you think of the pattern of that movement, it's a lunge. Mm -hmm. So we hammer lunges so hard, not from the get-go, like we kind of laid the foundation to be able to build up to that. But now he can do that no problem. He can do weighted lunges. He can do deficit lunges. He can do Bulgarian split squats. Yeah, like the amount of functionality that he gained, he's seen awesome gains in building strength and building muscle. But it can't just be that because that takes time. You know, that's a really like great goal choose some other goals, build on top of that. That's what I'm really trying to say here. Yeah. And I, and that sort of thing builds confidence too along the way, because as we get older, we don't want to feel helpless. Like, you know, putting your groceries away, taking your groceries out of your car. You don't want to have to feel helpless. Like you have to bring somebody along just to get groceries or hunt someone down. Yeah. You want to be strong and independent. And I, as a woman, especially like I really, you know, want to be able to do these things all on my own and, um, role model that for my kids too. But yeah, yeah. So we've talked about adding in cardio and continuing. Let's let's build on top of like, uh, real quick. We kind of touched on it where to start, but then how to progress that over time. The days of cardio, like start with one to two days a week. Yeah. And then where do we go from there? We kind of talk about that. Okay. So if we're doing those one to two days of cardio, we want to build from that. So we want to go from one to two, maybe we sprinkle in some sprints or even like a different form. Um, my brain's thinking of running, but if we sprinkle in a different form of cardio, if you're running, maybe we add in rowing or we add in bike sprints, sprinkle in those extra cardiovascular exercises. That way we're also switching it up and mm-hmm. using different muscles. Um, and then we can slowly build from that as well. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you're doing one to two days of cardio, I would try to keep those pretty lower intensity so that Mm -hmm. you still have energy for your strength training sessions. You're, if you're also trying to lose body fat, you're probably in a caloric deficit. So your energies might be a little lower than normal. If you start to add over time, you know, do the least amount of possible. As far as what I mean by that is do your strength training if you can get away with losing weight without doing a bunch of cardio, do it. Like you don't have to add five days from the get go because once you start to hit a stalling point, then you increase your cardio. Say you're doing five days a week of 30 minutes cardio. You hit a stalling point. You either decrease those calories or you increase that movement. So you're either going to do more cardio or you're going to eat less food. I'm probably going to choose to move more than eat less food. Mm -hmm. So then you got to do 45 minutes, five days a week, like start really slow and then add one to two days a week. Once you get up to doing about three or more days of cardio, what you can start to also do, Alyssa kind of mentioned this too, is increase the intensity. I would only do one to two higher intensity cardio workouts per week. Make sure that not every single higher intensity cardio or not every single cardio workout is a high intensity workout. Um, Most of your cardio workouts should be lower heart rate, just longer duration, just going at a steady pace, whether that's biking, walking, running, rowing, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. um, steady pace. And then one of those days, maybe that's where you start to do intervals. You do 30 seconds on 30 seconds off one minute on one minute off that type of stuff, because you're going to optimize both energy systems within your cardio, um, to where you're going to be working on your anaerobic energy system. And then the lower intensity is going to be working on your aerobic energy system, which is going to teach your body to burn body fat a little bit better. But that higher intensity is going to be really good to improve your VO2 max and just the overall strength of your heart. So, And more fat burn Yes, at that level. Yeah. So it's, you know, having different intensities. Again, getting specific with it, like creating some structure. On Monday, I'm going to do this. On Tuesday, I'm going to do this. On Wednesday, I'm going to do this kind of cardio. Thursday, this. Friday, this kind of cardio. Like just creating a program because when you create that structure, you can add things, take things away accordingly and just slowly build your way up rather than just winging it. And it's, it's just not going to get you to where you want to go. Something to keep in mind as you're building this too is, um, you know, if we're in a state of stress where our, we have a lot going on in our lives or we have a lot of stress going on overall and we're not sleeping and we're not able to prioritize our food and fuel our bodies. If you're, in an, in a phase of stress and you're adding more stress onto your body by incorporating more cardio and more cardio, you're only doing more harm than good. And so that's where we run that risk of losing muscle while implementing more cardio too, is that added stress on the body can 
can do more harm than it does good. So staying in a more lower intensity um, cardio, whether that's like tracking your steps, making sure you're getting in daily walks and, and some sort of movement, not just saying like, don't do any movement at all. Yeah. Just bumping down the intensity of that during a stressful period of your life is going to be optimal too. Because like I said, when we do get stressed out and if we're not eating enough and we're not fueling properly, then our bodies do tend to want to store onto body fat and get rid of muscle first. Yeah. And you're just, you know, sleep is a huge quotient with that too. And I think that if you're looking to make any sort of performance or body composition change, you have to be at least getting at least six hours of sleep a night. I would, Minimal. if you can, I would try to get seven to eight. You're going to recover better. You're going to feel better. You're going to have more energy for your workouts. You're probably going to be less stressed. Like you were just mm -hmm. talking about, like that's a huge quotient to, to stress management. So you're just going to respond better in certain situations. So sleep is a huge quotient of that because that's where we recover. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't recovered and you're just constantly breaking your body down, you're not going to be able to come in and give effort in the gym. You're not going to have the mental capacity for counting your calories or counting your macros or just doing the daily life functions that you have to do that's, that are your life responsibilities. So sleep and stress, I, I can't emphasize that enough. It is super important. You might not think that, oh, my stress is directly going to correlate to losing more body fat or maintaining more muscle or building muscle, but it does. It, it helps. Yeah. It, it's really, especially with your ability to like stick with a program. And Alyssa was actually reading a research study. I don't remember the specific numbers. I won't quote specific numbers, but they had two groups that were both trying to lose weight. The group that slept more lost significantly more body fat than the group that slept less. So, mm -hmm. and I said, I don't, you can go search for it and look for it. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was yeah. a significant amount. So yep. it does play a huge role in whatever body composition change or performance goal you have. Make sure you're sleeping, make sure you're managing your stress and that you're giving your body what it needs. You're not just starving it. We want to be able to get stronger. We want to be able to be healthier. We don't want to start to like waste away and diminish away. Yeah, I think there's a lot of signs that your body will give you too when you're under these stress, stressful times or situations. You know, you, your heart rate, like in a workout, sometimes my heart rate will be higher than normal. Yep. And I'm like, okay, either I'm getting sick or I'm over, overly stressed. And yep. like, I need to maybe take a rest day tomorrow and listen to my body. And I think that as I've gotten older, I've gotten better at that. Um, and, and like my rest days are typically still like an active recovery, stretching, you know, doing something that's fitness related. Cause this is like my place to decompress. Yeah. So I can't take it away fully, <laughs> even if it's just like a walk on the treadmill or grab the foam roller and yep. stretch. You're always good about that. Yeah. I mean, just getting some movement in and, and feeling good overall, but do listen to those cues that your body is telling you or you know if you're trying to reach for more caffeine throughout the day it's like hey maybe i'm <laughs> guilty <laughs> maybe i am not sleeping enough you know like there's lots of symptoms too and and the less we sleep the more that we're up and are going to be hungry yeah and we're going to be reaching for food right late night cravings yeah, yeah. so sure. those are all key factors to keep in mind too yeah so to answer the question yes or no, cardio doesn't burn muscle. As long as you have certain things set up in your program, yes, you can do cardio and strength train and still build muscle and lose body fat. That's what I was getting yep. at there. <laughs> yes. No, cardio does not burn muscle. As long as you have the certain diet things set up, your strength training, um, you're managing your stress, you're getting enough sleep, you're doing all the things right there and you have that program set up, yep. that's where you can effectively do cardio and still build muscle and still maintain muscle. Yep. So we hope this podcast helped guys. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. We'd be happy to help. Just let us know in the comment section. If you listen on Spotify, on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening on, we'll get back to you. We'd love to help out any way that we can. And like I said, this month we're doing that free program giveaway. So if you have not entered yet, go down to the comments in the description below, click on that link, fill out that form or head over to fitgrindforma.com sign up and you can enter for your chance to win a free custom program. So yeah. And if you're new to training, we do have some open spots available for online training too. So feel free to reach out and we'll see you guys in the next podcast.